All right, guys, welcome back to a brand new video. It is your favorite YouTuber here. Anyways, in today's video, I'm gonna teach you guys about core routines and um, basically how they work, how to use them, what they are, all that good stuff in today's video. All right, so let's go ahead and start. So first things first, I'm gonna... Oh, oh my, my Siri went off, sorry about that. <laughs> all right, so first things first, go ahead and enter a script into your server script service, uh, and then we go ahead and get started. All right, so what is a core routine? You may be wondering, what exactly is a core routine? What does it do? How does it work? Um, and that's what I'll explain. All right, so first of all, what is a core routine? So core routines are pretty cool. They can create new threads in a script. Now basically what that means, if you guys don't understand what threads are, um, in my last video I actually explained spawning and delaying, um, which are actually examples of core routines. Those fun they're like built-in functions, but I'm gonna teach you how to make your own core routines without using Roblox's built-in functions. Anyways, if you didn't watch that, it's fine. I'm gonna explain that um, from the basics. Okay, so when you make a new core routine, it's like creating a new script in your place, right? Cause like if you have a script right here, okay, and I print, oh sorry about that, and I print uh, cheese, okay, and then down here I print uh, chicken, okay, chicken, chicken and cheese. Um, I don't know why I picked those words, but I did. Okay, um, one is gonna print after the other. I, obviously, cheese is gonna print first, and then chicken will print second, and it's not gonna happen at the exact same time because it'll print cheese and then it'll print chicken. Now, let's say we want it to print at the exact same time. How we do that is we go ahead and put chicken in here, all right, and then it'll print at the exact same time. But we don't wanna we don't we don't wanna use two scripts. That's too much work, right? I don't I don't wanna have to use two scripts. That's just annoying. I wanna keep all my stuff in one script. So how do you do that? We well, create a new thread in your script, and that's what core routines are. It's creating new threads in your scripts. So let me delete that old script right there and I'll make it from scratch. All right, so yeah, that's what it is. Uh, anyways, it can actually save time sometime because you, you might actually uh, have all the variables already in the script and that way you don't have to copy and paste them and all that stuff. And also it could save execution time as well because you don't have to save all those variables again, uh, which is pretty cool. Okay, anyways, um, it basically allows you know threads to run it multiple times in the same script. Okay. Um, how we go ahead and do this is you have to create a quarantine, all right? Or not a quarantine, a quarantine. There you go. <laughs> all right, so you just do um, all you have to do to make it a quarantine is you just do uh, quarantine dot create. Now we could just do it like this, but we want to actually mess with it a little bit more. So what we're going to do is actually put it inside a variable. So we'll do local new thread is equal to quarantine. Oh no, not chicken. Quarantine dot create. Okay, and then you just type function in here like an like an event. And then you just hit enter, and there we go. All right, we have our everything we want to run in our quarantine. Basically, this is like a new script, okay? This entire blank space right here is like a new script, okay? That thing like that. And now we want to make it do something. So we'll make it print cheese, okay? And then we'll make it down here. Actually, I don't, I don't like cheese. I'm, I'm honestly tired of cheese. Uh, what about like cookies? All right, who like, doesn't like cookies? All right, so we'll print cookies, okay? And then on here, we want to print chicken. Uh, actually, no, no, um, no, not milk, ice cream. All right, there we go. Okay, and now, so we want to print cookies up there, and we want to print ice cream down here. How do we do it? Okay, well, we have a core routine, so it should print at the exact same time, right? Well, first of all, no, it won't, because obviously the core routine is going to come first, but if you actually were having like a while loop, um, you know what I'm saying, that would be running repeatedly, then that would be useful, because it would be, it would be able to run this and that at the same time. Now, obviously not at the exact same time, but pretty close to it. Um, but don't worry about that. Anyways, um, okay. So yeah, we're gonna go and put cookies in there, and then um, it should work, right? It should print them both at the exact same time, or theoretically the exact, the exact same time. All right, so let's go ahead and hit run, and let's see. And no, it didn't work. It printed ice cream, but it didn't print cookies. Now why is that? It got past our core routine, but it didn't even print ice cream. That's weird. Well, it's not weird, okay? Uh, the reason why is you have to actually actually start your core routine uh, to make it run before you can actually have it do stuff. So how you do that, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is type in coroutine.resume. Now you may be wondering why it's resume. I don't even know. It basically, it's because you can actually pause coroutines, which I'll explain in a second as well. But um, it should be like coroutine dot start, right? But no, it's resume. I, I don't know why it's resume because resume is like like restart, not not restart, but it's like start again, right? So wouldn't it be like coroutine dot zoom or something like that? Like you know, <laughs> I, I don't. I'm thinking too hard. <laughs> Anyways, um, all right. So coroutine dot resume, and then you just pass in the name of the thread, which is there, and then you just go ahead and hit run, and then it'll work just fine. As you can see, it, print, it prints cookies. And it prints ice cream at the exact same time. And now you could just put this on a while loop right here. You could do while true do, 
uh, and then you could do wait and then you could put that in there as well and then even put a while loop in here as well so you could have two threads running at, running at one time um, so I'll do weights and then I'll do and all right now as you can see what's gonna happen is we're gonna actually be able to run two threads at one time so as you can see it's moving super fast it looks super cool oh my gosh my eyes are actually like hurting a little bit like what is going on I, I don't know if it looks like that for you guys too but like on my screen I see both words like my eyes at least are interpreting like this they see both words at like the same time and it's just because it's going so fast at the same time right now this is really cool because we have a new thread if I were to just put two while loops in my script it wouldn't work and obviously it wouldn't work because it's only one thread it would run from top to bottom and a while true do loop is never going to end it, it never ended right it's while true do so it's never going to finish the first loop so as you can see it's just printing that a lot it is like times 60 times 80 times 90 times 100 but it's not actually even getting to the to this and that's because it's only one thread and it can only do one thing at a time um, but with core teams you can create another thread which is super cool all right anyways let's leave that for now all right, another thing you need to know about is quarantine.wrap. And basically, quarantine.wrap is kind of like a replacement for quarantine.resume and create because basically what you're doing is you're um, you're putting, think of it like a function with a quarantine shoved inside of it, okay? So like you just do quarantine.wrap, right, like this. And then what happens is, is when you call it, you just do new thread like that. And yeah, now you're just wrapping a quarantine over a function, uh, which is, it's kind of like creating it, but it's not, but yeah, anyways, and I can go ahead and print out here whatever I want, like, hey, and then uh, it'll call it as you can see, and then there you go, hey, perfect. All right, anyways, that's that's that. Okay, uh, also now parameters, how you do parameters is pretty simple, you just kind of pass them in here, A, B, C, and then you just put them in here, you know, um, a, a, B, C, okay. Um, parameters, all right, we're not gonna worry about those for now. All right, now, once you're starting a quarantine, right, I, said you could, I said you could stop it. All right, well, how do you stop it? How, how do you stop your quarantine from running, okay? Or how do you pause it? Because um, you can stop it, or you can just pause it, do whatever you want. All right, so how you do that is you do quarantine.yield, okay? Actually, first let me explain what are quarantines actually useful for. If you guys don't know, like, quarantines are pretty cool because you can create new threads in the script, right? But a practical example of what it would be for is, like, data store saving, like an auto save at the bottom of your script. Sometimes when you make a data store, you like to have, like, auto saving at the bottom of your script, which makes it a lot easier to, like, read. And you can see everything in one script, and you don't have to, like, go to two scripts. So it's pretty cool. Um, I use that a lot. I, usually, I just use a spawn function, to be honest, but I probably should switch it to a quarantine because spawns aren't that great. But yeah um anyways <laughs> all right so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is yield it okay so how do you actually pause your quarantine uh your guy or your thread all right so what you do is first of all we'll, we'll go into our thread right here and we'll just print uh quarantine started running okay uh and then we're gonna do quarantine dot yield okay if you guys don't know what yield means, means like stop or like wait um uh, if you never drove before, you probably wouldn't know what that means. Um, but, but yeah, when you drive, you know, you have like yield sign, which is like wait. Um, but yeah. Anyways, um, then we'll just put um, after the yield, we'll print prints. Uh, quarantine is running again. That way we'll know it, it's, it's running again because, right, it, it'll yield and then uh, we'll know it's running again. So now we just need to call it, okay? We just call the quarantine once, and then it'll go through this, it'll go through the script, and then if it hits quarantine.yield, it'll stop, okay? And then if it stops, it'll never start again, unless you, unless you start it again. So you need to actually make sure you start it again, or else it will never start again. So now, as you can see, we have a new thread, and then if we just hit run, it'll only print quarantine started running. It's never gonna get to that second part, because we never called it again. But if we put it again, as you can see here, we can have quarantine started running and the quarantine is running again. Now it happened really fast because that's just how fast that's how fast Lua interprets code. But if we put a wait in here, like wait three, um, then as you can see right here, um, it'll wait at three seconds and then it'll start running again. So yeah. All right, so that's pretty pretty cool. Now one more quick function after explaining with quarantine is quarantine dot status. Basically, quarantine dot status. What it is is it just checks the status of a quarantine. Now when you're doing this, make sure you actually make it just a regular quarantine and then just pass through the name of it, um, and then you'll see. Uh, so if I go ahead and actually, I'm not going to yield anymore. But if I go ahead and actually uh, just check the status of this quarantine, as you can see here, it's actually what it's, what it's going to say is it's going to say it's dead, or it should say it's dead. Um, and it didn't even it didn't even work. What 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 happened? What what 
What happened? Oh, I'm stupid. I didn't even print it out. I just did coroutine.status. <laughs> so I didn't actually print out the status of it, which is a string value. Um, and you'll get like three different string values. You'll get like either um, you'll get either running, dead, or suspended. Um, and you'll I'll say what each of those mean in a second. But as you can see, it's says suspended. And now um, I don't know why it's suspended. Actually, why did it, why did it say that? Um, oh, it's because we never started it. My bad. <laughs> uh, we never actually started the core routine, so it, it never never works. So if we actually start it, uh, so we do core routine dot resume because currently it's like technically yielded. Um, so if we just if we start it up or resume it, and then it'll see there you go. It says core routine started running, but then it says dead. Now why does it say dead? That's kind of weird. Shouldn't it be running? Well, no, it doesn't. It's not. It's not running. The reason why is because it, it actually knows it finished the script. Uh, core routine. The the, it, the thread is finished, right? There's nothing left to interpret. Nothing left to code. Nothing left to print. Nothing left to do. So basically, it means it's dead. So dead means the core routine stopped running, and it's it's done. It's done for now, right? Like it's it's just done. Uh, um, done for now, at least. Um, but basically, um, you also get one more value, which is running. And now, how you how we would probably achieve that one is if we if we actually had it doing something, like in a while loop, for example, or if we had it like checking for events. That's another way. Um, but as you can see here, it it should print out coroutine, or actually it says suspended. Um, wait a minute, why did it suspend it? Hmm. Hmm. It should say running. I don't. I don't know why it says that. It says suspended. It prints out really fast. Um, all right. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna actually wait a few seconds before it starts running. Maybe that's it because it prints that out first, and which it should. But then it. Okay. No, it says suspended. Well, it it should be running. I I, I don't understand that to be honest with you, but. Um, all right, very cool, very cool. It's not working. All right, if <laughs> you get the point, though, um, it works, kind of. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much how you check. Um, also, you have another thing called coroutine.running, uh, which is another function of coroutine, and basically it'll check to see uh, what coroutines are running, and it'll print out uh, all the running coroutines. Also, one more thing you have is is yieldable, and that basically means if you can actually yield your function. There's a few exceptions for when you can actually yield your your coroutines, and basically as long as it's not a meta table or it's not like a C function. And if you don't know what that is, then you're probably not using it, so don't worry. Um, but yeah. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. It's been your favorite YouTuber. Okay, leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new for more awesome tutorials just like this one. And yeah, that's it. Peace.